the international exchange operated by Australia's Overseas Telecommunications Commission might now also be called an extraterrestrial or interplanetary exchange, the O in OTC perhaps standing for outer space. Alongside birthday telegrams, business messages, phone calls and telecasts to distant lands, messages and information are switched between Earth and the deep reaches of our solar system. The exchange, largely automated, requires computers to cope with the heavy load of traffic, earthly and otherwise. It's a happening place where time is valued in microseconds. And a microsecond before viewers at home see them, the first pictures of man on the moon will be displayed on these monitors in the special video centre established here by NASA. The pictures will arrive simultaneously through two receiving centres, the Honeysuckle Creek tracking station south of Canberra and the Australian Radio Telescope northwest of Sydney. More than likely, the first pictures the world will see will be received by the 210-foot dish at Parks. This massive, finely honed Australian instrument is one of the most sensitive receivers on Earth. It's in fact about six times more sensitive than the 85-foot dish at Honeysuckle, so that the Parks picture may have better definition. Broadly, the bigger the dish, the greater the sensitivity. For Apollo 11, the need for this sensitivity can be appreciated when you realise that the power output of the lunar module's transmitter is only 10 watts. By comparison, the ABC's television transmitter's output is 100,000 watts. By the time the moon signal reaches Earth, it's so faint that it has to be amplified millions of times. But of course, for the astronomers at Parkes, this is their business. The detection of incredibly faint signals from millions of light years away, from the mysterious pulsars and quasars. Actually, the moon is a vital adjunct to the Parkes telescope. The Australian astronomers have devised a technique known as lunar occultation to precisely pinpoint the distant radio sources. So that while information gathered from the moon by the astronauts will help us to understand more about how the Earth and the solar system evolved, the moon through Parkes is already helping us to understand the evolution and the life of the very universe itself. A stream of data at a rate of 50,000 bits a second will come back to Earth during the Apollo mission. It will be sifted and collated by computers and relayed in real time to Houston so that Earth-based controllers will always have an instant picture of the condition of the astronauts and their space vehicles. The major station in Australia is the romantically named Honeysuckle Creek facility. But when the astronauts are actually on the moon, Honeysuckle will have the nearby Tidbinbilla station working with it in one complex for communications purposes. Thus, when Armstrong or Aldrin wants to talk to Collins in the orbiting command module above, the voice signal will come into Honeysuckle and thence be relayed up to Collins through Tidbinbilla, a round trip of half a million miles. Thus, a very critical role for Australia. Mr Wilson Hunter, NASA's representative in Canberra. Australia is strategically located to be one of three stations around the world which are the ones that we have designed to take care of the data from coming back from Apollo on the moon. And the competence of the Australian staffs, the technical uh, skill that they have developed over the years, is extremely important to us in the uh, conduct of the Apollo mission. And here in the video center at OTC Paddington is the American who will have his finger Anderson, on history. Voice check, how do you read? I read you loud and clear, over and out. Well, in just over four and a half days' time, if all goes well, Charlie Goodman here will be one of the first men on Earth to see man step foot on the moon. Yes, almost the first, but the Australian public will only be about a microsecond behind me. And in fact, the signals take, I think, 1.3 seconds to travel back from the moon. That's approximately right. Now, here you'll actually be getting two pictures, one from the Parks dish and one from Honeysuckle. That's right. This would be from Parks, this will be from Honeysuckle. Now, how will they compare in quality, do you think? Hopefully, they'll compare very favorably. Of course, the Parks antenna has much higher gain and should, we think, be the best picture. But we hope that the Honeysuckle picture will also be of quite good quality. Australia since has grown to have quite a massive involvement with the United States in this space program. Yes, the Australians operate the tracking stations and of course the Postmaster General and OTC handle the communications. Uh, 
my experience with the, which has been, of course, mostly on the communication side, has been absolutely excellent. I know that I will have top communication support in Australia. Well, on the lunar landing day itself, you're really going to be the man in the hot seat, or with the hot button, perhaps we'll say, in that uh, you can black out the screen if something goes wrong up there. You can be a space age sensor, in fact. No, I won't be the sensor. <clears throat> I will be the man who will be ordered to push the button. But if that should happen, and we certainly hope that there is no reason to have to cut off the viewers, I will push a button on an order from Houston. Have you given any thought to what might go wrong? Well, yes and no. <laughs> uh, you can think of many things that could go wrong. Uh, to me, I think sometimes the fact that you can do it at all, that you can even get a man in space and recover him, I, although I have been in this game for quite a while, still to me is marvelous. Well, here in this little complex within a much larger complex at Paddington and Sydney, history on Lunar Landing Day will be monitored and perhaps controlled.